Um, yeah, so today we're going to be talking about um, smart contracts, um, specifically smart contracts on Ethereum using Solidity. Um, yeah, and we're going to go um, and talk about various tools that you're going to use when you're developing smart contracts on um, the Ethereum blockchain. Um, yeah, talk about smart contracts and um, yeah, for most people here, write um, your first smart contract and actually deploy it um, on a test blockchain. So this is going to be um, more or less an interactive session. Um, yeah, so I hope everyone follows along. Uh, Okay, so let me share a pad. Um, where everyone can actually go and um, see some of the resources that we're going to use. <clears throat> and also, uh, yeah, let, let's make that pad our playground for um, today's session. So let me share my screen. Um, yeah, so I hope everyone has access to this pad. Um, yeah, so what are smart contracts, right? We've, we've seen the concept of smart contracts previously, but um, smart contracts are just basically pieces of code that um, run on the blockchain, right? Um, yeah, and they're simply just programs. You can have um, access modifiers, you can have different data types, uh, and you'll have some specific conditions uh, that run um, some other specific conditions, right? Um, yeah, so they're just pieces of code that are just running on the blockchain instead of um, a normal computer, uh, which normal programs do, right? Um, and we've also seen the concept of wallets. And um, for now, you're not going to be using, um, just like the Algorand, no, you're not going to be using the Algo wallet or um, another type of wallet, but we're going to be using a more generalized um, wallet, which is um, used to store tokens, um, which are EVM compatible. Um, EVM is the Ethereum's virtual machine, which is um, the core part or the core engine that is, um, running the Ethereum blockchain. Um, yeah, so if we go to MetaMask, um, yeah. uh, I think let me share this here. So you can go to MetaMask and um, the, install the extension for Chrome, right? So let's add that extension and this is going to be holding um all the public private key pairs um that we are going to store um for the blockchain right for the either for the ethereum blockchain or for any test ethereum blockchains or for any other blockchains which are um, evm compatible um so connecting you to ethereum and the decentralized web we're happy to see you and then you go on and to get started Right, and so there are um, specific terms that you have to agree with when you're going to be using this wallet. So I'm just going to agree. Um, and if you have a secret recovery freeze, um, so this wallet is going to be um, holding um, your private keys, right? Um, and so those private keys are the keys that you're going to be using to sign the various transactions um, that you're going to that you're going to execute. Um, so let's let's start off new and let's choose the option where uh, we'll create a new wallet and um, a secret recovery freeze. Um, yeah, and we are prompted to enter a new password. Um, this isn't that necessary, so um, yeah. just giving it a default password, um, and I'm creating the password, and then we're led to a video introduction, a one minute and 35 video introduction, which you can watch, um, which tells you more about the secret recovery freeze, um, how you should store it. Um, yeah, so 
the secret recovery phrase, it's a 12 word phrase um, that is a master key to your wallet, right? So it holds all of your private keys. Um, it's not just the single private key, but it's the master phrase which you use to unlock, um, which you use to unlock your wallet. So if anyone has um, access to this secret recovery phrase, well, um, yeah, your your every asset, every token, um, or any crypto that you've actually stored in your wallet then that person can do whatever uh, they want to do with it, right? Um, and yeah, you should never reveal your secret recovery phrase, um, but this is just a wallet we're not, I'm not going to use after this. Uh, yeah, but keep your secret recovery phrase um, safe if you're not just using it for development purposes and um, if actually valuable um, cryptocurrencies or crypto tokens are actually going to be stored in the wallet, right? Um, so yeah, let me just save this, uh, save this here because uh, MetaMask wants to ensure that you actually remember this phrase, right? Um, because if even if you don't share it with anyone and you somehow manage to forget this recovery phrase, you know, you, you're not going to be um, able to have access uh, to the assets that you own. So it wants you to store this in a in a safe environment, right? Uh, yeah, and so it asks us what the secret recovery phrase is. Um, yeah, so hurt, raise energy, major faint, shine until supreme yeah wreck i'll desert soft right and so yeah after we've confirmed that it's um assuring us that we have we remember our secret phrase and it's telling us to it's giving us some tips um on how we can make it safe right and so this is our wallet this is um the wallet we um, we just opened, right? And so there is there is nothing on it. Um, we have zero ETH, so there is nothing valuable stored in our wallet. Um, and nothing valuable actually is going to be stored in our um, in our wallet today. This is just going to be a demo session, but you can store um, all of your assets um, inside of your your wallet, right? And this is um, if you see the network here um we are on the ethereum main net which is um the main ethereum blockchain right um and we have a specific address um which that address is um is considered as a single account um on the ethereum blockchain um and within that account there are um there is zero ETH or zero usd um words of ethereum right or ether um so um but we're not going to be using we're not going to be working um on the actual ethereum blockchain but we're going to be um working on um test networks right um and test networks are um free networks which are um just hosted um by the goodwill of developers um to actually just write out smart contracts because um testing and working on the actual main ethereum network is really expensive right uh, so a single eater um i think last time i checked was um bouncing around in the range of 12 1200 dollars to 1600 dollars right um, so a single ether is expensive, and um, if you actually test um, on the main network, you're going to have to pay lots amount of money. Um, and also, um, if even if you just simply roll out um, your programs into the main Ethereum blockchain, um, it might have bugs and might lead you to actually lose. Uh, a lot of actual value right um and so you're really you're really incentivized to play with this um test networks as much as possible before um rolling out your <coughs> rolling out your decentralized application over onto the 
main blockchain network. Um, yeah, so we've said we're going to be working on test networks. So let's just show the test networks that uh, are available, um, right? And it shows us some of the some of the common Ethereum test networks, like like the Goyle test network, the Sepolia test network, and um, this local host test, mm, test network. Like right? so, at the end of the day, the blockchain it is simply still just um, a program running on top of computers, right? And so. Um, if we have time, we'll see how we can actually set up uh, uh, a dummy blockchain node, um, probably using Ganache um, by the end of this tutorial. But yeah, you can have a local node which is just um, which is which is just bounded to your um, local instance, and you can simply just connect to that um, to that local to that local instance. Um, of the blockchain that is running and execute various transactions and um, yeah uh, test your smart contracts as much as possible right um, and so let's switch to the Goerly test network um, and see what we have here right and even in the test network we still don't have anything we have zero Goerly eat right um, even if we had um, Goerly eat um, it's not worth anything um, it is just uh it's just going to be a dummy token that you get um yeah but we still don't have anything um but unlike having to go and either um buy ether um to use on the main network um which is going to cost us a lot or actually um yeah um previously when yeah i i, I don't think i need to uh, yeah i need to go in depth into um, how the things work, but yeah, we still don't have um, anything over on the gray late. Um, the, has anyone faced any problems um, up until now? Uh, okay, so what is a test network? Um, Margaret, okay, so there is the actual main network, right? The actual Ethereum blockchain um, that is running. Um, and making transactions deploying your smart contracts on that blockchain um is really expensive it is going to cost you um the net the uh, you're going to have to there, there are things there are concepts that are um called gas fees um by which which every transaction that you make um whether it is um putting your smart contract um on that blockchain or um actually maybe even interacting with that smart contract changing the state of the uh, changing the state of the, the of that blockchain is actually going to cost um it is not free um it is not free land you just can't um put your work um for free on actual blockchains right and so this test networks um actually allow you to play with your code um to see if you have bugs um to really um play around with things before you actually uh put your decentralized application um into the actual blockchain right and they have yeah um where are they stored so they're simply just run like the actual blockchain um so if you wanted to run an ethereum network node you can do it you can simply go to the github uh to the github repository download the source code and you can start it off right and it is just um, a communication among computers that are hosted anywhere, right? And the core concept of, there are these private blockchains, but the core concept of blockchain is um, there is no barrier to entry. No one, is, no one is going to stop you from actually joining the network, right? And so you can boot up your computer and you can connect to the main network. And usually same goes to the test networks as well, right? There are, people there are developers that are um that are actually incentive even maybe even incentivized because um by maybe the ethereum foundation or just by themselves um to actually run this nodes right um and so just like you would um you would run the code um you'd run you'd start a node to join the actual main blockchain um same goes to the test network as well 
uh, it is it is just running uh, globally. And if you don't want to actually um, share a blockchain, you, you maybe want to start from scratch um, and actually just simulate the blockchain yourself, uh, you can run um, a local blockchain. Um, and that is what this MetaMask works. Let me, let's pin this here, yeah. And so running a local instance would be, why is this? Yeah, okay, so running a local instance would be using this local host at 8545 would be just like um, running that node that we're talking about. Um, yeah, um, is, is that clear? um no problem uh yeah and so um i hope everyone has managed to set up metamask um yeah and you're you're getting started with your wallet right um yeah and so let us get um some eat some girl eat um or that simulated eater um that we're going to actually use right and so that is when faucets come into play right so for faucets just like their name suggests um they're used to get free tokens right and so let us for the ethereum goalie network let us connect our wallet um so we're using a metamask wallet that is what we have um installed and that will allow us to that will allow us to actually get uh, some of the assets, right? Okay, so yes, yeah, detecting wallet, connect wallet. Yeah, so you should get this notification. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, and you're only supposed to connect with the sites that you trust um, because there are definitely lots of phishing attempts um that would uh that would allow um yeah that would allow hackers to get hold of your assets so um but this this is uh this is okay right um so we can verify that we are gonna have to verify that we are human uh what is it asking for an item that a person normally wears okay so hats um okay so next uh, so I think we're going to have to log in via Twitter as well. Um, now let me continue with Stan Academy. Uh, okay. Uh, let's just date 1979. Um, don't know, uh, skip for now. So technology, fitness, outdoors. Yeah, so we're not gonna be using this Twitter account, but just for the, for the faucet purposes, um, because it actually um, requires that you log in, right? Uh, yeah, so you're going to have to connect your Twitter account first and then verify that you're human. Um, with this caption. And then you can send the request, right? Um, and so this request sends you um, 20 test link. So we're not going to be talking about link. Um, link is uh, the token that Chainlink uses. Um, this dives deep into um, oracles, which um, you can look into. Basically, what oracles are, are um, they allow you to connect um, your real, your, the real world into the blockchain, right? Um, so the blockchain is an environment which is encapsulated on its own. Um, it is various nodes that are running together, um, but have actually no connection um, to the outside world. And that's what oracles do. And you can, um, Chainlink is, I believe, the most common uh, and most popular oracle out there at the moment. 
Um, yeah, and so let's send request uh, to to our wallet, right? We, if you remember, we had um, zero query eat, um, zero eat for for the testnet, and zero eat or zero eater for actual for the actual um, main network as well. Um, yeah, but it, what this is doing is it is initiating a transaction where it is actually sending um, specific tokens to our wallet um, on those specific chains. And yeah, there is there is a specific confirmation time, uh, and our and the assets have now been transferred uh, to our wallet over on that. Um, specific blockchain, right? And so, Ether Scan is um, the is a program that that actually allows you to scan all of um, the transactions that happen on EVM compatible chains, right? So, if someone is sending you money um, from a single account, or even every transaction that is happening on the blockchain, because everything is public, um, you can use uh, you can actually um, use ether scan to get hold of everything right so let's add it here yeah so this is for the goerli network and if you remove this um subdomain extension you would get uh you'd get the value for uh for the actual ethereum blockchain right um and what this what this did is if we we have a specific transaction hash and this was a successful transaction. Um, this is our block number. Um, so a single block um, in the blockchain encapsul uh, holds um, various transactions. Um, and um, yeah, this is the block number that, uh, that our transaction was put in, right? Um, and so there is this from address, um, which is the address that actually um, sent us that um, test network eat, right? Um, and it sent it to our address. Um, like if you see this, uh, is there a way to maximize this? Um, yeah, so if you see this, this address um, should be similar to the address that is specified here, right? Yeah. So it, it is, it has this, and this address is actually the address of the faucet or someone that actually has um, lots of these tokens and is sending it to whoever, who, to whomever is actually requesting it, right? So if they, if they, if the faucet is actually sending it from multiple accounts, this might be different, but um, for most cases, it, even when you're, you're requesting um, for that test, um, for that test eater, um, you're going to be getting it from this address to the address that, uh, that I, to the address of your account, right? Um, and so if you go here, you can see all of the transactions that, that that specific address is actually making. And you can see that um, it has over 4 million transactions. And yeah, that is because this faucet is actually sending um, is sending that test Ethereum, uh, that test Ether to lots and lots of accounts, right? 18 seconds ago, um, 30 seconds ago. So my transaction is here. Um, for those of you that are following along, your transactions are going to be here. Um, you can see the specific addresses that are happening. Um, yeah. And so either scan is a really useful um, tool that you're going to be um, using when you when you work with uh, the blockchain or when you actually work with Ethereum. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. And so we now have zero point one going to eat in our account. Um, so is anyone having any difficulties um, or? Any questions thus far or something that hasn't worked? Let's debug that before we go along. Okay. 
um, Mike and Kyle, I think um, I've talked about link. Right, yes, that question was before. <laughs> yeah so so everyone is good right everyone is following along great um yes Simtina. uh what were you seeing uh the transaction on the network what were what were you looking at um this ether scan or this specific transaction okay um on, on ether scan um yeah i've I've shared the link for etherscan um dot io but um this is specific for the goalie test network that we're using um yeah and you can change that for the different um for the different um either test or main network that you use um yes Anthony. Uh, how do we connect to the Gordly test network? Um, I mean, in our wallet, there is a, like a test networks list. I mean, um, two or three. Yeah. But like when I try to connect to them, like it doesn't work for me at least. Um, what happens? Like when you press that what? network, well, what is happening? Um, you you uh, have access to this test networks, right? First, like I have to click add networks, right? From the drop down. Okay. And uh like uh go to like the network section and there is a Gorilla test network and Sepolian test network. So when I try to click that one and uh click add network, it will prompt me to fill up a form. Um, yeah. To click uh, comes, uh show and height ah, you have, you have there it. is a show height show slash height test networks and after yeah. that you 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 change the setting it will take you to the setting page after you click show and height okay yeah yeah, yeah, uh, there yeah. Is a, yeah. so in the setting page what do i have to do all right there is this this show test network show test networks okay i toggle i just toggle it on yeah. and uh does that make it work now oh, you yeah. can see yeah you can ah, i get it yeah i'm connected now okay. yeah thanks yeah um, yeah nice thanks um yeah um anyone with other questions mm. okay um yeah so if everyone has um done that we can um go on to at least smart contracts introduction right um yeah and just to get started um we can use the remix ide um which is an online ide for um smart contract development and you can start um working online uh smart contracts introduction yeah you can go to remix.ethereum.org uh, and you'll be prompted with um, yeah, introductions to how various parts of this IDE works, right? There is the Solidity compiler. Um, so Solidity is the programming language that we are going to be using to write our smart contracts, right? It is, uh, it is the most popular language out there, um, which, which is in, really fast paced development um yeah and it, it has at least the most resources um when we're building smart contracts for ethereum right uh and so that is what we are going to be using to write our first smart contract right and so there there are various um solidity files here like there is the that actually ship with Remix. But to get started, let's go to Solidity Docs and just copy the 
solidity by example. So I think just an introduction, a simple smart contract. Yeah, let's start with the very simple smart contract that um, solidity, the solid, the, do, the solidity documentation actually um, provides. Uh, um, docs.solidity.org. And you can go there and get access to this code, right? Um, so yeah, we've said what a smart contract is, is just basically a piece of code that um, runs on the blockchain. Um, and that is what you see here. This this right here is the simplest um, a smart contract that you can get started with. Um, and we can, we can go more over it for those that don't have access that I went to the docs. Here's the code. Um, yeah, and let's create a new file. Um, so uh, a very simple storage dot uh, soul. So dot soul is um, the extension for solidity, right? So we're writing our smart contracts in solidity and our files um, will will end um, in the dot soul extension. And let's paste this um, this code that we've gotten from the Solidity documentation here. Um, so yeah, this first line is just a comment, which isn't necessary. But since you're publishing your source code um, on the blockchain, since it is a since it is a public code, um, it is best practice and most times necessary to actually. Um, put in a license um, for your code, right? And this Pragma Solidity um, specifies the Solidity version that it is um, going to work for, right? For the Solidity compiler. Um, so Solidity is a language that is really changing. Um, and you can see it is it hasn't even reached the initial um, first release, at least uh, as far as I'm, I'm aware of. Um, and so there are various features which are um, included and dropped really regularly, right? And so um, a feature that does not work for a specific version of Solidity um, will work for another and vice versa. And so it is really essential to specify uh, specific compiler versions that are going to be used when our smart contract is going to be run. And so this smart contract is made to work for Solidity versions between um, 0 0.4.16 and less than 0 0.9. Um, and that is what we are specifying here. Um, and contract, you can think of this as um, a class um, for those with object-oriented programming background. Um, yeah, but it is just simply the specification of uh, the specific smart contract that we are actually building, right? Um, yeah, and we have a contract, which is um, the simple storage. Um, it has um, a global variable, or an unsigned integer, which we have named um, storage data. Um, so Solidity is a statically typed language, which means we have to specify the types um, of the various variables that we are declaring, right? We can't just go on a wimp like, like we do with Python. Um, and just declare the variable and uh, give it a value, right? You're gonna have to, you're going to have to specify the type. Um, yeah, and what we have here are just two setter and getter methods, right? And so what this first function here is doing is it is just setting. Um, it takes in a parameter, um, which in our case an unsigned integer, um, and it's it just assigns that uh, that number that it has taken into this um, into this global state variable, right? Which is the stored data, and we have this getter function, um, which is just going to return this um, return this stored data number. Um, yeah, so we have now been able to 
write our first smart contract. Um, yes, Antonia. Uh, what does the word public mean here? Um, so public means um, anyone uh, actually can call this uh, this method. Here, right. So this is a public method which uh, which is accessible outside of the smart contract. Right. So if um, if I deploy this smart contract onto a test network, and um, that would mean anyone um, can actually call this method, um, which we'll see. Yeah, so we now have our smart contract written. Um, yeah, and so let's compile the simple story dot sol. We have compiled it and let's go on and deploy our smart contract, right? Um, so if you see here, the environment that um, Remix ships in is it has this virtual machine, which is like its own test network, but more of like a simulation which we cannot um, easily get access to. But since we already have um, a simulation of uh, various assets on MetaMask, and since we've decided to use um, the Gorilla test network um, to do our work, let's um, switch um, to which network we're actually going to be deploying this smart contract to, right? And so we're trying to connect now Remix with our MetaMask. Um, again, we trust Remix, uh, so we are going to connect to our MetaMask wallet. And we are now connected to the Gorilla Test Network. And we now have access to this account, right? To our account that we actually copied here previously this account that we own, which has that um, test Ethereum, which has that 0 0.1 test Ether, right? Um, so if if we actually were using, uh, if we go to coinmarketcap.com, if we actually were um, using the actual network right now, uh, 0 0.1 ETH would have been worth like 10% of this, which, would, which means $136, right? Um, but we were we managed to get where it is. yeah we managed to get this 0 0.1 ether very free um yeah and so um we're not going to be talking about gas limit um we uh you can just use the defaults right now because we're using um test values um but yeah this this deploy button here um deploys your smart contract to your test network Right, so let us deploy it, and we now have to sign this transaction, right? Um, because we are taking our smart contract and we're putting it on that test network, um, and we're going to deploy it to that test network, and anyone can actually um, then go on to interact, uh, interact with our smart contract, right? So let's confirm this transaction and we can actually view this transaction on Etherscan, right? So this is a Goyle testnet transaction, which is happening at this time. And it is pending because this has, we our transaction has not been put into the blockchain. And even if it has been put into the blockchain, um, there is this confirmation time, which means we, it requires um, some specific time for the transaction to actually be confirmed, right? Um, and depending on the implementation of either the test network or the main network, um, this will be a, a varying factor. Okay, yeah, so this is a, this has been a successful transaction. Um, and from our own address, from the address that we have here, um, 0x EF and N was 9DF, yeah. From this, from our account, we've been able to deploy um, a new address, a new contract address on the Gorilla Test Network, which 
um, which now has our smart contract, which now has our piece of code um, that everyone can or anyone can actually interact with, right? Um, so if we go back to Remix now um, and it's the maximum this button yeah and go to our deployed contracts we see we have our simple storage at um i think this is the address yeah so we have our simple storage at a specific address right at this at this address um yeah and so going to the point um of internet this setting get methods now um are actually accessible by anyone uh, because that's the beauty of blockchain, right? Um, everything is public. Um, so if we actually try to get uh, um, the value that we have now, we see that we have an unsigned integer of 256 bits, um, which has a value of zero, right? So the default value for integers is um, set to zero. And when we're trying to get it, when we're trying to return the value of this stored data um, state variable, we get nothing uh, because nothing has actually been uh, stored in it, right? But if we actually um, set it for some specific value um, and we set it to 100, um, for example, we're going to have to confirm because this is, this is not just getting a specific value from the blockchain, but it is actually setting a specific number to this um, storage data variable that we have here, right? Um, and so we're setting it. And this is, again, another transaction that we can go on and see um, on Etherscan um, and see how it is actually going. Um, yeah. And so until this actually finishes, um for those that have deployed their simple storage okay so this now uh this transaction has now been confirmed but for those that have managed to actually um deploy on the test network i actually want to um i actually want to see and um want us to actually go and modify um the specific addresses so Let's have this name and contract address. Contract address here, um, so you can um, you can see the we can see the addresses of the smart contracts, and um, anyone can actually um, go on and manipulate those contract addresses, right? Uh, so I have actually set it to now hundred. If I go back to Remix and I try to get it. I see I get now 100, right? So, but if anyone actually goes to uh, goes to my contract address, um, transactions recorded, um, there was actually an option to, to add um, a specific contract here. Yeah, so you can add, um, you can load a contract um from a specific address right so you can go here and uh bring in the address that you specified here that i've specified here right um so if you can actually load this here and actually um interact with my smart contract um and there would be nothing i could do about it right um so right now even right now when i get it it's still 100 because um i don't see anyone that has modified it but um, has anyone else um, actually deployed their contract? Um, because I want to go through how you can modify um, someone else's contract and see how uh, the public blockchain works. Yes. Okay, yeah. Thank you, Mikhail. Uh, yeah, so let's load um, Kyle's contract um, here. Uh, at address. Yeah, so it's this contract here, right? Which which contract is it? Um, 
or is it still mine? Simple storage at, uh, where is it? Yeah, at 1D. Okay, so we have Michael's contract here. And if I get it, uh, if I get the variable that is um, stored in Michael's contract, it is 300, right? So even if he wants it to stay as 300, uh, this is still a public method. And um, this this still has power to the public, right? And I can, even when I get this now, it is still 300, but let's say I want to store um, 10,000, right? Or let's say even 90,000, right? And I can actually set it. it. It is going to cost me some fee, but this is the test network and I don't care. So I can set it to whichever number that I want. And if you go to Etherscan, you will then have this transaction, which um, after being verified is actually going to be modifying that contract number, right? So there is this specific contract address um, by which seven minutes ago, Mikhail created this contract. Um, and this transaction here, he probably set it to, no, he set it to 300 um, over on this transaction. And there is another transaction um, where I called it from my account um, using some specific test eater that I got for free and set it to a new number, right? So if I try to get it now, or if Mikhail tries to get it now, or if any of you try to get it now, you're now going to be getting 90,000. But as you can see here, there is this still use of this immutable ledger that this blockchain provides, which we have um, each transaction actually specified, right? Um, so in a normal database, if someone goes in, um, let's say a bank worker, and decides to decides to change their or theirs or their relatives account value to have a couple of million dollars um you might have a timestamp and maybe different snapshots that have uh the value of that account at a previous um at, at a previous time um but this the power of the blockchain this immutable ledger that it provides actually shows us what each transaction has been um, from any account or towards any contract uh, or in any case as well, right? And so, yeah, what, what you have to keep in mind is just smart contracts are just pieces of code that um, run on the blockchain, right? And you can have really complex logic here, um, adding more into this, um, and handling different conditions. And we've seen a glimpse of what oracles are um, on which you can actually get real world data and um, real world interactions from people uh, or from different events, depending on uh, the use case that you're going to be building on. And yeah, I think we're going to be going over um, much more use cases tomorrow. Um, yeah, but if no one has any questions or if anyone has any questions, we can actually answer them. And um, I think if Nardus is here, um, she can take you forward into more building other uh, other smart contracts. Um, yes, not nay. Uh, is there a way to get the value, the specific value for a transaction? Like you, there is two transactions, right, on Mikhail's uh, Yes. Contract is there a way to get like a specific uh, transaction value? Okay, so if we go to that transaction, um, there should be yeah. So yeah, uh, view input as original. Um, this is the input data. Okay, so if you decode the input data, yeah, it was encoded, but yeah. Even on ether scan, you can actually see it. So this data was set to 300 by MK. Okay, yeah. Is there a way, like in using solidity, like the code actually? Um. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think there's there's the, there's a way. Yeah. There's definitely a way. Um. I'm not sure exactly at this moment, but yeah, there's a way.
Um, okay. You just yeah. have to you just have to scan um, various parts of the blockchain. Um, it, it definitely becomes really hard, and um, Etherscan really simplifies it at this way. But underneath this, um, I think you're going to be looking at it um, using hard hat, but even that uses like um, really long JavaScript calls, which are um, which are really cumbersome to write down. Um, yes, yes, Margaret. Um, hi, I did not understand um, how the network works when someone else joined. Like, I saw you trying to get Michael's um, uh, 90,000. I don't know what it is. Uh, could you just explain it again? Um, OK, so there is this smart contract or there is this piece of code that um that mikhail put um put on that on that test network right um and so his his contract allows you to do two things only um it allows you to it has this state variable or this stored data right um and his contract allows you to either set it to a specific number or it allows you to get that specific number, right? Um, and so what he did first was he he deployed the contract and then he went on to set it to 300. So this, this specific variable um, was then set to 300, right? And um, the smart contract allows to either set or get, right? So I, I was able to get that 300 value to that 300 number that he had um, stored here. And after that, I actually just wanted to set it to 90,000. And so I ended up setting this to 90,000, right? And so if I get it now, uh, no one has actually changed this from 90,000. And so it is still 90,000. Um, but if I then wanted to change it back to 300, um, I could set it back to 300. I could confirm it. It would be another transaction um, appended to a newer block, but it would then be this stored data variable, this single var single integer um, that is holding value is just being interchanged, right? So if I get it now, this unsigned integer is now um, back to 300. Um, is, is, does that make things clear or? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Okay, um, yes, yes, Sanjay. Um, I, I was not able to bring up the, uh, oh, the panel that this uh, deploy and um, the panel now. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm having difficulty um, hearing you on chat. I, I was not able to bring up that panel, that side panel that talks about that uh, as uh, things about deploying and and so on. The um, unique, yeah, deploy that and run the fashion. Oh, also, the, meta, the MetaMask, you've installed MetaMask, right? Yes, I have. You have installed MetaMask. So um, what happens when you try to set your contract um you're not getting this metamask notification is that what's happening no, I wasn't. I wasn't. um so maybe um what has happened is you've not allowed um this extension uh you've not given access to remix when it asks when you initially logged in okay um How do I do that? uh I'm not completely sure um, how to go at it if you say no initially. Uh, like this, the, the MetaMask extension is supposed to have access to your website and um, you're, you're supposed to give it access to, you're supposed to give it access to this. Um, I, I think there should be a way um, before reinstalling this. Any anyone who had done that um, and then had to give access again. 
Um, this is more of a Chrome extension issue. Mm -hmm. So what can you do to fix this? Um, I think just like maybe try and um, refresh the image. Um, yeah, yes, Margaret. Yeah. Um, maybe try the extension uh, icon next to MetaMask. Yeah, this one. And um, no, the, the the next one. This uh, this extension can see and change. Yeah, it should be here. Yeah, okay. So there's this manage extensions. Uh, and I think you can, um, yeah, you might, if this is not triggered, uh, you can change this and you can, I think this on click should be there, but for now, um, yeah, go to the settings and uh, I'm not supposed to remove it. You can give specific accesses. Yes, Vassal. Uh, how how can we connect to the uh, test network on Remix using uh, the, our wallet? I think mm. it's yeah. So uh, if you go to this, what what is it? Yeah, if you go to the deploy and run transactions um, over on Remix, um, its default environment is the Remix virtual machine that is provided here. Uh, yeah, but you can use the specific wallet that you have, this injected provider, um, MetaMask, in our case, because we're using MetaMask, and when you change this, um, if it has access to this specific extension, it simply just connects to your account if you've given it proper permissions. Yeah, okay, and uh, does this test network... Uh faucet the one you showed us before does it does the does, does this transactions uh costs us that that tastes it um yeah yeah um each transaction is costing you a specific test um eater um, if we go to eater scan um yeah so you had to pay a transaction fee of this much right um 0 0.0025 ether um, since this is actually um, the test network and it's worth nothing, see, this is worth zero USD. But if this transaction was being made on the actual main network, this would be costing the actual dollars um, in value. So um, there is, if we go back to our code and we see maybe one more concept, where was it? Uh, contracts, simple story, the soul, yeah. So there is this concept of view, right? Um, so when we've said that this is a state variable, um, this is a variable that is lying on the blockchain over on that contract. And so when you're modifying that state, when you're modifying the state of the blockchain, that costs you. But if you're not really modifying anything, and if you just want to take, uh, if you just want to take a peek at the blockchain, um, that won't cost you. That is what this is doing. It is just returning um it is just returning the value that is stored here and that is what this view keyword does um and this is actually a, a free transaction this 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 function call is free and it doesn't cost you anything and that's why um when we when i was calling the where was it okay so yeah uh we can we can deploy this again but yeah so but when we were calling this get method um we weren't getting any pop-up that is actually telling us to sign the transaction but when we were setting it um it was actually asking us to sign that transaction um because this this one costs and this one doesn't even on the test network and that that goes same ways to the main network um is, is that clear so. okay um and tonight yeah is it possible that you you set uh, the set function with the view uh with this view keyword can you make it basically um um 
can you make the contract in a way that people can set the, the value without needing to do a transaction? Um, no, uh, like, so the, the, it depends on what you want to do, right? So there are access, there are, um, various cases where you can actually, um, execute things, um, or execute various commands. Um, but if you, at the end of the day, it, if what you want to do is modify that number, um, you're going to have to set it, you're going to have to change it over on the blockchain, right? That's the point of it, like having this um, immutable ledger um, where you can actually see transactions one by one, um, where each state is modified um, one at a time. So it, it wouldn't make so, sense so, to... So it, it, is it... Uh, is it um, but it's possible theoretically. I, I don't know. <laughs> I think I get the point, but uh, I was trying to understand uh, uh, how it works. Yes. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I think I'm a bit confused. Like it's the, it's the flow of transactions that, that make the blockchain, right? So you, you just do, you want to make sure that you don't want to pay. Um, is that the case? <laughs> so that it let's say that right. I don't want to pay. <laughs> can, can I? Can I do? Can I do? Can I do a contract in a way that no, you don't have to pay? Is that a... you don't have to pay? Um, like for for this specific case, if you want to change that specific number, you're going to have to pay. Right. So depending on depending on the blockchain, uh, you might choose chains that are not going to charge as much um, or even there might be chains which um, don't charge for specific types of transactions. Uh, so you might go over into those. But the Ethereum chain and this test chains that actually simulate it um, are going to charge you uh, for this various state changes that you make. Um, okay, last question, just to, to make sure that I understand correctly. Do we need to set this uh, keyword view? Transaction doesn't need a transaction. For example, if you if you remove this view keyword from from the from the from the code, it will, is, will the will it change? Um, no, it, it will still work, but we're not modifying the we're not modifying any state, right? Um, so at the end of the day, I think you're going to have to pay if that happens, but let's, let's deploy this transaction and actually see, um, right. So this is deploying the transaction. Okay. So it's not, it's, is this, this is a warning, right? Function state mutability can be restricted to view. Yeah. So it's, it doesn't make sense because you're not um modifying the state so it, it wouldn't make sense to actually uh pay for this to get that number right because it, it is actually expensive uh but i think it's going to have okay so set is it transact error invalid big number string value yeah so it is actually even expecting um a parameter to actually be set uh, if um, we... Okay, uh, if I may, Antonan. Um, so you can hear me, right? Yeah, yeah we can. We can hear you, Marcus. Okay. Um, so any execution of the code or anything actually costs on the smart contract, right? So it's it's going to have some transaction fee. So you cannot have any code execution without paying for the for the fee but in this case when you are using view you might not uh, you, you're only getting the data but you might use it for other functions when you when you specify your functions here for example you might uh, get the name of the or or the data here the stored data 
to perform another function, right? So you still be using your data for something else. In, in this case, you're not. You're only this simple function only uh, returns the, fu the 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 data, but you might have some uh, complicated function that you can perform by using the data that you get from. The, the data you get so uh, it doesn't have doesn't matter if it's a simple function or if it's a complicated function it is going to cost you some amount of transaction fee yeah if that is the question sure. yeah and i think yeah this to, to add upon that i think this yeah this get function now um becomes a costly transaction right um you're not really doing anything you're just trying to get a number yeah but when you can do it for free, you're adding transactions, you're adding, um, you're adding compute power, you're adding verification um, to the blockchain. Um, and you're paying on you're paying unnecessarily and um, you're making um, unnecessary transactions at the moment, um, just using uh, even the guess method now, um, because you've removed the and so it is still possible, but uh, that's the, you shouldn't do that. Okay, I think I I, I get I think I get it. Yeah. Um. um yes, mom. Yeah. Um. I wanted to ask, how do you check the number of users in, on a network? And are we also going to have a look at the private networks too? Um, okay, so not at the moment. Um, so the number of users, um, it depends on the type of question you want to ask, right? Um, so the core concept of blockchain is um, each user for each transaction uh, should actually create a new account um, when they're making a transaction, right? So a single user can have an unlimited number of actually um, this private key, private public key pairs that um, they're using to interact with the blockchain. Um, and so one purpose of this as well is anonymity, right? Um, so if you're trying to count by uh, the number of people that are um, actually using the blockchain, it becomes really difficult. Uh, but if you're just trying to find the number of accounts that are on a specific blockchain, uh, you just have to count the accounts and um, the, key, the account addresses that exist on the blockchain um, and just leave out the contracts for the Ethereum blockchain, right? Because contracts themselves have their own addresses. And so if you leave that one out, you can get the number of accounts um, on the blockchain. But uh, yeah, again, finding the actual number of users um, is difficult. Um, on the private chains, of course, um, there will be some some entity, some, probably some centralized entity that is granting access to that decentralized network. Um, so that entity would have access to that specific number. Um, Thanks. Okay. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think I can pass this over to. Um, hold on. Um, okay, so I think I'm, I can uh, um, Okay, so 
So this is one of the um, online ways you can run a smart contract using Remix, right? So there, there are also other ways that you can uh, you can run your smart contract that could be using your local uh, environment, and you can set up different tools for uh, running your um, smart contract, right? For testing and deploying your smart contract. So. Um, one way is to use hard hat or travel. So they're actually like an offline smart contract um, development environment that you can use and uh, you can you can create and set up uh, different development networks for it and you can also deploy uh, develop your smart contract on your local mission before actually deploying it on the test net or on the main net. Uh, that you can use. This is actually the best. This is one of the ways that you can secure your smart contract because you don't you don't have to uh, deploy every time you make changes. Here, when you are using Remix, uh, if you can see, you are deploying it every time on the on the network, right? But if you are using your <coughs> local environment, <coughs> you don't have to worry about the security issues. So. Um, we we can we can take a look and how to use this, um, how to develop how to use this local environment to develop our smart contract tomorrow. But for now, we can. This is just remixes. Uh, this is just to get you started. So, if you have any question, I think uh, Azaria, you've went over everything that I was going to talk about. So, it would be just saying the same thing. So, I don't know if you guys have questions, you can ask. Uh, but tomorrow, maybe you we can take a look at how, after uh, installing this local environment, we can take a look at how we can use uh, our local environment to deploy the smart contract. But today, for today, I think you've covered everything that I was going to cover. So maybe let me ask, uh, let me answer some questions if they're okay. Yes, Ms. Uh, maybe just to uh, be sure, what what is what is exactly required from us in order to transact to and from uh, other contracts using this uh, Remix website, maybe? Um, uh, I ask this if question you... I, I, yeah, sorry. I asked this question because while I tried to uh, transact with the previous contract it was that was provided, it is sending me, sending me an error and maybe if there's something that is required from me or there's this network, this uh, environment or something, I don't know. That's why I'm asking this question. Do you mean the same code that Azari was running just now? Maybe you can share the screen and you can take a look together. Is that what you mean? Um, Azara, what, what do you think? There, there was this uh, contract. Maybe. This one? Yeah, this this one was uh, giving me this error. Is that is that visible? Or um, what is the error? Can you maybe zoom in? Yeah. Uh, this is the error I'm getting. Maybe is it the way I imported it? Yeah, I, I just maybe we can just uh, go over to the requirements or the steps instead of debugging it. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I mean, uh, we. I don't. Okay. So when you are building your uh, smart contract contract on the Ethereum, you first you declare your, your contract, right? So. That's, that's the main steps that you actually follow is just you declare your contract, you define the variables, you uh, impl you define the, some implementations. So it could be some modifiers or functions and you can create methods how you access or and how you uh, interact with these functions. So, and then this is how you write your smart contract. Other than that, it's just, you just compile and you deploy the contract. But I, I don't think what you are getting is an error. 
per se. Maybe it's not what well, you're not getting the full information. Maybe. What are you? Uh, what are you deploying? What which smart contract are you deploying? When you are deploying uh, smart sp contracts, there are different. Yeah, my. Okay. Okay, what which one did you actually use? I I just used this. Uh, what was it? Storage uh, contracts one storage, oh. that one, and it kind of works. Uh, I will try. I was I was able to set and get from my. Okay. Okay. If, I think Azaria uh, compiled a different contract, so that that is just right, Azaria. This yeah, is yeah. going to. Yeah. Yeah, I took it from the solid DC talks. Um, but yeah, there's just uh, maybe um a small implementation difference. Um. Yeah, but but that should uh, that should still work. Uh, yeah. So the storage uh, uh, contract is only going to dis return you the number, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it should it should return the same number. Uh, and even the default one that is in my remix, um, I'm looking at it at the moment, and it does exactly the same thing. Um, yeah, so there there should not be any difference. But I saw that um, even the co one contract that Pusta had deployed is working properly. So yeah, um, I think that all works. Um, yeah, uh, but I think since we also have time um, and to really dive deep into smart contracts tomorrow, um, if you go over, I think let me we share my screen. Um, and if you go over onto the pad and there are um, various installation of tools that are um, listed here, right? So um, if you go to trufflesuits.com, um, you'll get to the documentation um, on how Truffle works, um, what Ganache works. So we've talked about um, running your local encapsulated um, test blockchain network. And so Ganache is a really quick way to actually get started with your own um, personal blockchain, right? So this installing this might take time. So um, yeah, download and install Ganache. Um, I think I had it on my computer, but it might take time to start up. So yeah, this provides you um, your own local blockchain and this um, Truffle itself um, allows for um, an easy compilation, um, testing, debugging, and deployment to various networks, and it makes it really easy. Um, of course, um, there is this higher level of abstraction that um, Remix is providing, but yeah, this goes down one level, and so definitely install Truffle, um, play around with uh making at least one smart contract as well over here um you can go over the truffle quick start um yeah uh and you can take a look at that you can also take a look at hard hat um which is um similar to truffle and really pop has really popular support as well um yeah and allows for um really easy ethereum development uh, as well and it also um part hat also comes with um uh, its own personal uh test chain network uh which you can go through the documentation right and both are i believe uh, more javascript focused um so for those that haven't um maybe done any javascript and want to maybe avoid it for now um you can take a look at brownie um, you can install Brownie um, using pip or pipex. Um, yeah, and so there are um, there are various tools that you can um, that you can install. And since this take time, um, you can you can go over them uh, right now and see how um, the development process also works um, on your own time. Um, Thank you. So go go to at least the setups of um, this processes. Um, yes, sir. Sorry, uh, which one is Python focused? Brownie. Brownie is Python focused. 
Um, I think there is also this web 3 dot pi, um, but I think more focusing on uh, brownie is the is the better option. But let me just add uh, web 3 dot web pi here. Um, yeah, so the two below are uh, Python-based um, development environments um, for building on um, EVM chains. Um, yeah, um, so that that's I think that's it from my end. So I think if no one has any more questions, I think we can end it here. Um, but yeah, definitely make sure to play around with smart contracts yourself. Um, yeah, and uh, make as many smart contracts as possible at the moment. Um, yeah, um, have, a, have a great rest of your day, everyone.